so welcome everyone. We have uh, today is April 9th, the uh, Finance Committee meeting, and let's call this meeting to order. Uh, we're going to be going over the uh, Senior Center. So we can start right right there if you'd like. Sure. Come on up. Or thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll leave that. Okay. For Valerie, should she come in? Okay, sounds good. So, um, I have, uh, I know that you have a submitted earlier budget. Um, we have been in conversation um, with at least one select board member um, about my um, my salary. Thank you. Um, so this is uh, a change and so far as that goes and what I'm requesting and why. Um, but first and foremost, I think I want to go through, and I'll be happy to, and I will go over that with you. Um, but the um, I wanted to let you know that um, in addition to what the town funds for the Council on Aging and the Senior Center, and this does not include the building senior center, um, like fuel, electric, things like that. I'm talking about the Council on Aging's budget insofar as programs, salaries, um, office supplies, um, uh, tuition and meetings, uh, things like that. Um, we don't just, um, we're trying to be very mindful of um, not just going to the town for funding. Um, two years ago, we started the Friends of Hadley Council on Aging because with town fixed budgets and the increase uh, in seniors, you can't uh, necessarily count on that going as far as you'd like for services. So, um, so we have the Friends of Hadley Council on uh, Friends of Hadley Council on Aging. If you go to the very bottom of what I've handed you. It says additional resources that offset the town budget on the bottom. So you have the state formula grant. This year was 13473 And the Friends of Hadley have contributed 5882 um, two of which were computers for the staff, which was taken off of the capital planning that was um, scheduled for next year. Um, salary subsidy, because what the town gives us that is offset by the formula grant didn't didn't um, cover what we needed to for a full uh, full time program coordinator and an outreach coordinator, um, and we no longer print our newsletters in house, um, meaning that we're not paying for the copy counts anymore. We're not paying for the paper to do that. Um, the friends have picked that tab up, um, and everything gets electronically sent to Paradise Copies where it's all collated and tabbed and folded um, so that we just put the mailing labels on it. Um, so all of those costs are cost savings to the town that is picked up by these additional resources. So some of your other departments might have a larger budget, but maybe they don't have some of these other ways to offset it. So I don't want you to think that um, you know the 89 or what have you is all that that encompasses what the Council on Aging does. We've just been resourceful in getting these other um, additional resources to offset that. Okay, there's no doubt about the fact that we have um, 10,000 seniors, 10,000 people turning 65 every day in the United States, and we're getting a lot of those people walking in the door saying, "I'm turning 65 in three months. What do I need to do?" And we're also getting people whose um, health care costs are rising that are on Medicare and people that are getting kicked out of the system and, um, you know, can't pay their Medicare premium, lost a husband, he's the one who handled that, they have a state retirement, all of a sudden they don't have Medicare A and B, what do we do? Um, that's where we come in, um, spending hours on the phone, advocating, using the governor's office to go inside and find out what happened, getting that reestablished for them. Um, you know, these are things that are happening every week that we, that we handle in addition to doing the health preventative or educational resources. Right now we're really into um, dementia-friendly communities. 
um, educating the community about um, people that you know, have known for years and years living in the community that are now living with a, a diagnosis of dementia and um, those same um, spouses are care, caring for them at home and there needs to be a lot of education around that to stay at home and not um, suffer from burnout and, and to connect them with resources such as ombudsman when the nursing home says this person's behavior is too, um, too volatile and, and we're just going to ship them to another nursing home. That's illegal um, and unless you, you, know, you know that you're, you're panicking, your loved one is, I mean, so this is the work that we do in addition to healthy aging and promoting that for people. There's 1,700 seniors in Hadley, um, you know, just like you have the uh, veteran service agent that gets benefits for the veterans if they're eligible or their widowed spouses, um, this is a vital service for a third of the population. So um, it's, it's good work. So um, I'll broach, um, so the total, uh, and gifts and donations, which is our revolving account, and I'll go into that in so far as there's four exercise programs, one, two, three, three exercise programs that we actually charge a fee for. All the other ones are free. Um, and so when people pay for those classes, it goes into the revolving account, and then at the end of the month, that facilitator of those programs gets paid for the month that they just worked. So that's that account. Um, I'm sure everybody here has heard, um, you know, Mr. Wiskevitz, our, our van driver, just passed away. Um, we're very grateful to his family for naming us as one of the um, beneficiaries of, um, if you would like to, you know, donate in his memory to the Council on Aging. So those things go for, um, you know, buying additional programs or, or um, supplementing programs or um, it actually pays for half of the cost of our bulk mailing for the newsletters to get mailed out to every house 60 and older. Um, you'll see in the uh, town account that we only asked for, well, I bumped it up to 1000 because postage went up, but it has been $1,500 a year. So all along, the Council on Asians has been using some of their gift and donation accounts to cover some of those town expenses as well. Does anybody have any questions insofar as the additional resources go? No. no. Okay. Does anybody have any questions in general insofar as the work that we do? No. Okay. No. All right. All right. So um, if we go um, from from the top, you'll see that there is a, um, a requested increase for my salary. Um, this is um, a long time in coming. Five years, I will be here in July. Um, during the um, interview, I was told that a, a wage and salary um, um, study was being done, and within a year, I would um, be hearing back from where that fell. Um, so I never did. and. Um, I got a step increase the first year. Um, COLA, two years. And then I'm into this one. And, um, you know, when we didn't need the money because we were three months without staff um, last year, I was happy to try and help out to get the firemen in. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a, um, gimme, gimme kind of person, but um, when I'm told there isn't any step increases being given out and this is going to be the third year in a row, um, and then I see another department head getting an entire grade increase. Well, we're not here to talk about the other departments. Okay, that might happen there. what we're I'm saying, though, is that there needs to, to be some equity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I have brought this up with one select board member, and they looked into a little bit of what the other department heads were getting, and she agreed that it um, should be a grade above with all the other department heads, and that um, I should advocate for that. Well, the select board would be the ones that you need to talk to about getting your... Understood. Right. Because there are other employees within this town building that are in the same boat as you that haven't gotten anything either. So I think, you know, that's one I'm of the... I'm not saying it's not deserved, though. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, 
and I understand that that's one of the things that um, that has been discussed uh, time and time again insofar as wanting a human resource person to be in the town. Um, so I would have to say if I'm not the only one. Um, I'm in agreement. We need HR and consistency across the board. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm saying. But we need funding to be able to do that. That's where you guys come in. Right. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, um, and then I'll, I'll just, um, and again, this is select board more than it is you, but um, some of the inequity also goes for hours. Um, my predecessor, before she left, um, um, jumped it up to 40 hours, um, apparently, and I'm not sure why that was done, um, but if you have a professional staff um, and all the other full-time employees here are working 35 or 37 and a half hours, um, I'd like to have a look at that as well to be equal with all the other department heads. And um, so you're currently working 40, you want to be decreased? Well, I'm saying if if that's what if that's what full time equals, I'll go down to 37 and a half or 35. Mm -hmm. If the hardship is, you know, finding a happy medium between all of them, mm -hmm. um, which is why I stated if you did, you know if you want to go down to 35 hours, then it's only going to be this amount mm -hmm. um, in so far as requested. Um, just as a, a you know, an additional information thing, for somebody who's exempt, they need to work five hours over what they're allotted before they earn any comp time. For me, that's 45 hours. For everybody else, you know, so. That's definitely where an HR person would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So thank you for being patient with that. Can I answer any other questions in so far as this goes? You'll see obvious increases to postage, um, office supplies. Um, we've kept pretty much everything else. Um, where I did decrease the driver's salary a little bit. Um, and the um, program coordinator is offset by the um, state formula grant and by the friends. Mm -hmm. Athlete Council on Aging, so we're not asking for the whole bill to be footed. Okay, I don't have any questions. Any questions? Oh, yeah, just keep wrapping my head around the 40 hours and 35 hours. So, if you were looking as far as to standardize you know, among other directors and full time staff, what's mm -hmm. the standard? Would you then be looking to be working 35 or 37 and a half hours on the regular, or are you looking to still be working the 40 hours, have the allotted time set to 35 or 37, so that I'm working above, so basically the comp time, what you're telling us about would change, right? So that if you then went above 40 hours, it would immediately start accruing comp time rather than the 45, is what I heard you saying. So it gets pro prorated, I believe. How did it? I, I'm not sure how that works in so far as whether it's prorated. Do you know, David? I don't take comp time, so I've not paid attention okay. to it. Okay, all right. I don't know the so answer to that. So what are 45 hours? I'm sorry? So what's the 45 hour limit that you were talking about where? So, so for an exempt employee to get any comp time, you have to work, I have to work five hours over my 40. So I have to put in 45 hours to even begin getting any comp time. So I, I would have to put in 46 hours to get one hour of comp time. Is that a, like a written policy somewhere that that? Yeah, it's probably it's in hours. the employee handbook. It's it probably? <laughs> no, it is. No, it is. Okay. So I'm talking about 35 or 37 and a half hours. Is that an option that you'd see as what would be allotted, but realistically, you would likely be still working around 40 hours, or you would actually go down to that 35, and would those hours get, with the work that isn't being covered, then go to one of your coordinators? No, 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 I'm not looking to, um, to hand off my responsibilities. Um, I think that in lieu of um, the work that we're doing now, um, if I even 
could go down to 35, 40 it would not be unreasonable, but I don't see, I have a, a very definitive work-life balance for my own sanity, <laughs> and I try. In fact, I, I don't think I've accrued any comp time. I'll take work home, you know, before I sit in the office, just because that's a little bit of sanity sometimes when you've been in the office for 40 hours. Um, so, no, I'm not asking, you know, to go to 35 and expect to work more than that for added comp time. That's that's my sanity that can't be bought. <laughs> Gosh, so it's just redefining when the comp time starts accruing as a matter of saying the policy would be standard, not your working day wouldn't change at all. No, if I if 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 you decided that you wanted or the select board or whomever makes the decision wants to go down to thirty five, I'll do my best to do thirty five. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and in that situation, would you perceive that any of the things that you're not doing with those extra five hours would have to fall to program coordinators under you? No, program coordinator just does program coordinating. Yeah, or the community outreach coordinator. No, nope, same thing. Gotcha. Okay. Still a select board question. I was just trying to wrap my head around. Probably it. eat at my desk a little more, but. Yeah. So Thank if you. you went to 35 hours, then you your salary would be less than this amount. If you're decreasing I, your hours? I broke it down in the purple on the bottom. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. Okay. So is there anything in this budget that you would or that's not in your budget that you would like to see added? At this point, um, we, we are um, looking towards 2020 to have the town pick up what the friends are covering mm -hmm. for the remainder of the program coordinator and the outreach coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, the friends made that agreement saying, okay, we can do this for two years without cutting our nose off despite our face um, if, if the town you know, can do, pick it up in 2020. I know that um, that when when this came out, the um, the whole budget thing came out. One mm -hmm. of the direct um, things that we were supposed to look at was one um, increasing revenue. Number two, how we had a shortfall, and everybody was going to try to see what they could do and also work with other um, other departments. Mm -hmm. Can you? Just tell me if this, any of that worked out for you. I mean, reaching out to the other departments. Did you? Um, was there anything that you can point out that you were able to go back? Well, um, because you know we're a human service agency, it's been a little difficult to find commonalities um, of service delivery, um, but. Obviously, when there was, um, you know, money that wasn't going to be spent last year, we looked towards a town need. Mm -hmm. So, in my mind, that's looking at the good of the town and not keeping. I mean, we probably could have gone out and gotten a bunch of computers or, okay. you know, spent it down or what have you. But what good is that when you have a need in the town that was a real big need? Right. Right. So, um, though it's hard to overlap for services as a human service agency with some of the other um, departments, um, we're certainly open to, you know, I mean, I think we've gone 
pretty far in adding to our resources so that we didn't have to depend on the town for any of those things to the tune of over $27,000 last this, this mm -hmm. fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So that's what I consider being responsible. Well, I know that some departments um, worked together and they were able to cut costs. They shared some, um, I was just throwing this out there, they shared their uh, the phone system in different ways and were able to cut costs there. Others cut costs because of uh, doing admin work. Um, they shared some expenses. So I just thought that, you know, some of these maybe maybe the library, I don't know if there was anything there, maybe the uh, park and rec, if there's anything there, maybe the veterans, I don't know, but I was just thinking that those are all human services type of thing. And if there was any way to share, um, a coordinator or something like that, share That's something thing, you know? to, to help, you know, with some of these, and maybe, maybe it wouldn't be off of this one, but maybe you could take some other duties off of another one so it, it so I only, I only have besides me there's one full-time program coordinator that works 35 hours a week and she's worth gold and then I have a 10 hour a week outreach worker um, who's a licensed social worker and spends more time in seniors houses than she does in our office so that's what with along with our volunteers that's that is the core of the workers that we have delivering all of these services. Um, so I would be hard pressed to find a way that we haven't already been, we're, we're, we're gonna be running behind the eight ball. We're gonna be looking for help. I'd love to see the senior tax workout program come along sooner so I can get some of those people in helping me as a receptionist during the mm -hmm. afternoon as a meal site coordinator. Um, and I know people who have been doing it for us for years that would qualify. Mm -hmm. And I didn't mean you take on their work. Maybe they could take on some of your work. Either way, I just thought that sometimes you coordinate. They could be coordinated. I, I understand. I think ours are kind of specialized to a point of these people that we have have been working with elders. Mm -hmm. For a long time, our program coordinator was a program coordinator over at the Chickabee Senior Center for 11 years. This is what she does. She doesn't know Park and Rec. She doesn't, this is the population she wants to work with. And quite frankly, she runs. She's great. Uh, with the new facility, I know it was discussed before when we were talking about department sharing things. Uh, will Park and Rec, I, you know, be able to use any of your rooms after a certain time to maybe host some uh, programs because I know they're trying to get up and going again mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, space is a problem and so I was just wondering if that's going to be able to happen. That's that's something that um, I think is definitely worth talking to, uh, talking about with, um, with everybody once things get a little more settled. Um, one thing that we are trying to do to help out is um, we have been asked to house Hadley Media during swing space for swing space while that building comes down and we move into the new building um, we're um, offering what is going to be the art studio for Hadley Media for swing space until the other plans are made um, so you know we're trying to do what we can um, that's a, a, group, a good question and one I don't have the answer for. I would think that um, right now for me to commit to another entity using the parking lot at night would be difficult, but um, I think that they have every right to ask and we should be listening. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? No. I think that would be it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, wonderful. And I, uh, I kind of forgot to, um, what I wanted to start with um, was I wanted to welcome our new members. Oh. <laughs> I jumped right in. <laughs> Sorry, Kathy. Okay. Kathy Saturka is here, and she's our new finance committee member. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Great. <laughs> 
Okay, I know Kathy it'll take a little while to uh, catch up with all these numbers. Yeah. Oh, we'll do our best to we help should. you out. Thank you. Okay. All right, so uh, the next thing we would have on our list was, let's see. I know we have the warrant articles. Um, I thought we were going to have one point see the building inspector, but I guess not. I've, text, I've texted him and asked him if he's coming. So yes, he did. Let's, okay. let's see if I got an answer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Well, let's uh, dig into the warrant. The warrant articles? Okay, great. Have you changed things, David? Is this a new draft? I mean, I have a draft from 2020. Review. You should have a draft. That, you should have the draft that says for legal review four six. Okay, I should get a new one. Do you need a new one? No. Okay. <coughs> no, I guess it's outside. Yeah. Can I just ask a question? So, like on Wednesday, the tri board meeting, just going off topic for a minute. So, we sat with all the departments, and they. They basically told us their needs, their wants, and so forth. And so if we wanted to make any suggestions or changes to the budget, so is that what Wednesday would be the one as when we present it or ask well, them? I, or? I don't think you're done with the budget. I think there's a number of open items that still need to be addressed. You know, right, so but tonight we're going to hear from the schools what their number is because okay. we've seen two numbers out of them, mm -hmm. one higher than the other. Mm -hmm. um, we still have the ambulance to, to wrestle the ground. Um, I was just thinking then, some of the departments that aren't having, are we going to break it up or just do it all in one night? What are you talking about? To go over the whole budget with the select board that we met with all the departments and then we're going to go over our thoughts and our shares with them about it or no? Well, what are we doing? What you all asked for and the selectmen agreed to is that uh, I present the budget presented it to the select board. The select board gave you the responsibility mm -hmm. to go through that budget in detail then go back to the budget to the select board if there are any open issues or if there are any areas of concern or contention. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard a whole lot of contention. I have heard that we are concerned about where we're going to take the FY19 budget and we do have, definitely have a couple open items. Mm -hmm. So does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, I was just, I'm kind of just along the line thinking about the people that come in and ask for their step increases and mm -hmm. uh, their uh, yeah, percentages that they haven't received for so long. So are they automatically going to be written into the budget that you presented us, but she just gave us this new form. Right. Which doesn't so match what you have. Which I haven't seen. So. Which, so this is all new to you That's as well. So are we going to say yay or nay to like the people that are looking, f I mean, should well, we I be think, voting on that? Uh, to well, I think in terms of the increases to the employees, the non-union employees, I think that, probably, and I hate doing this, but we're going to have to do it this year. We're going to have to get through the union contract negotiations. So you don't want to be in a position where you've given out X and then the, uh, you, the union people and then the non-union people get X plus three because there's nothing left. <clears throat> well, people will be unhappy and the reverse also obtains. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I think that the salary adjustments probably happen in October uh, as okay. a, because you want to approach this to the degree that we can from a unified position. Now the, the ones I have off the top of my head I mean, obviously, this one, there was the one from the collector who wanted that money. But I think, <coughs> too, that would be a, uh, it might help if to know if we're, if that 30000 if we're going to be increasing that dollar amount, you know, the, the, the increasing the revenues by 30000 if that book gets voted in. Right. I mean, that's, 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 that's helpful to know that there's more money and we haven't included that in here. The other one that I, I remember seeing was, I think it was the um, clerk. Hers was 
it was a cola. There was just an, I think it, hers was supposed to be in there, but the cola wasn't added in the budget. Yeah, so there might have been some uh, editorial There's issues between what the, the accountant gave me and what was voted. Okay, so you're just looking for a step increase as well. That may be as well, but I remember that the hers said that there was, um, and I think also the assessors had the cola. Or they, no, that was in there. I think it was just the town clerk list that was a number, I think. That, I think it was just needed to be adjusted. Okay. And it wasn't a lot. Yeah. Okay. So I, but we, I, I'm just, like you're saying, like, you know, waiting for the union contractors, because I'm off the union contracts. Because I'm always the one saying, don't forget the non-union people, because right. we always make sure we take care of, you know, not make sure, but we always have to, whatever the union contract decides, go with that. And then I just want to make sure it's like cross the board, because a few people that we met and the statements that are being said here, you know, it just doesn't show consistency. So would board. it be helpful to have like a roadmap of where we are in the process? Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I think the one, yeah. a lot of things start falling into place when you know the landscape. Mm -hmm. All right, so tonight, Capital met. That's probably the one and only capital meeting. There is a request that was not spoken for tonight for the fire substation. So maybe there'll be a return to capital. But capital is basically done. The CPA is done. Tonight the school committee is going to vote on their numbers, so we'll know what that is. Um, Wednesday, the House Ways and Means submits their budget, and we'll have another look at the cherry sheet at that point. Wednesday, the select board will have new members on the select board, two or three, uh, and uh, we'll have an opportunity to talk with them and find out how they look at the world and what kind of concerns that, that they bring to the table, what kind of constituencies are they representing. Uh, you're going to be meeting with them. Uh, I have sent the warrant off for a review with Bond Council, who's given me his comments back, and to Town Council for the rest of the non-borrowing items. So I should be learning the Town Council's comments back by the middle of this week. I expect that the Select Board will sign the warrant on the 18th. We can defer that until the 25th if we have to, but that is the drop-dead deadline if we're not posting. On the 26th, we don't have a town meeting. So things things are falling into place at this point. Thank you. Union contract negotiations are ongoing. They will not be done by town meeting time. Virtually guaranteed. So they won't have the, they won't have those numbers for you. So what's next? Well, you've done no work on the warrant, so I think that tonight will be an excellent opportunity to jump in and take care of that. All right. We have something called a consent agenda. I think you're all familiar with it, but here's an example if you don't. First, first seven articles on the warrant are routine in nature, generally no debate, uh, can be put on the consent agenda which would be passed by uh, a unanimous vote. Those are the grants, the chapter 90, the short term borrowing in case we have a cash uh, flow problem. We're transferring fund balances, $37,000 from interest to debt principal. That means we can pay down our debt faster by applying it to a principal rather than interest. It's a revenue neutral issue. Revolving funds, adjusting some of the revolving funds for the Conservation Commission, Goodwin Memorial Library, and tax liens for the uh, Treasurer will require an infusion of $5,000 of free cash and for seed money for that revolving fund, but it would take that expense off of the taxpayers' back and put it on the 
people who don't pay their taxes on time. Number six would be the uh, water filtration units for 26,000. And then the administrative C uh, for CPA for 15,000. All of these are proposed to be on the consent. I'm sorry, go back to number four. I said fund balances was the debt and interest. That's not right, that's number eight. So fund balances is our traditional sweeping up of old articles and returning the money for productive use. Why is it uh, article on Article 7? You have 36 um, Article 7 for CPA. Yep. The open space, historic housing, 36, 36, 36,000, but in the motion it's 30,000. Set for 36 if I have to. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was 30. But maybe. I, did too, I don't but remember. I did. Been so many numbers yeah. came around. Good catch. Yeah, it should be 36. It's supposed to be 36? Yeah, it's supposed to be 36. Okay. So. so, do you agree these are on the uh, consent agenda? Mm -hmm. I would agree. You will have a recommendation for all seven of these articles. Does someone want to make a motion? My motion to accept all seven articles on the consent agenda. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. So that's. 400. Zero, zero. All right, number eight is a budget adjustment. So this, is, this is where we're talking about the $37,000 transfer from right. interest okay. to principal. Why this came about is that we didn't have quite as much borrowing as we anticipated. This is a net revenue neutral or expense neutral adjustment, and it would uh, reduce the amount that we have to borrow because we're paying off more of the debt principal rather than the debt interest. Recommended by the treasurer. Yeah, I'll make a motion to recommend Article 8. Okay. I second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sorry, Terry, I just wasn't sure. Article 9 is the omnibus <laughs> budget, still a work in progress. Moving on to the capital. 1,043,400 of that is 855,400 is this fire substation. 170,000 is for the um, HVAC system over at the elementary school. 13,000 is for the flashing lights at the Hopkins Academy school zone. And 5,000 would be for the redesign of the town website. The Capital Committee met today. They did, took no action on the fire substation since nobody was here to represent that project. They approved the website redesign, <coughs> the Hopkins Academy flashing lights, and the 170 for the HVAC for the elementary school for the project to make the project uh, viable. They've received bids in above the available cash. So you want us to do something? I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I just wanted to make sure. So you would like us to place a vote and leave the fire department out at this point? Um, or to put it off? I, I am led to believe that the fire subcommittee is trying to meet. So if you want to defer your vote to another time, that works. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to take your if you want to take your vote on 
three of the uh, of the, of the uh, capital items you've made. I'm good with just kind of putting it off. School stabilization. Again, I always try to combine things together if I can. This is one that I would like to combine together. But I have shown it as a separate article for the first school stabilization and the second school stabilization. Um, the schools are meeting tonight. They're going to take a vote on this, whether they actually want this article or not. Um, there were some questions as to why this may be necessary or prudent. So we can either talk about it tonight or we can wait until, until we hear from them. I think I'll, I prefer to wait to hear from the school department first. No sense voting sense. if they don't vote yeah, for I, it. I can, I'd like to, maybe we can have a little discussion, but I, I agree with putting off our vote to have no vote. Um, as far as, as, are we all on the same page that we would like to see that the, the school choice money get, get spent down if we are going to be doing the, the stabilization? Is that I'm not for the stabilization. Okay, that's okay. So, well, I know it's okay. No, no, no. I, I mean, I mean. <laughs> I, um, so, I, I kind of would just like to put it off until I hear what the school department says okay. again before. There's no sense. Yeah. Putting I'm, out our opinions if they don't want it. Okay. I mean, at first I was thinking it might be a good idea. At this point, after listening so far, I, I've started to weigh a little more against it. Um, against? Against the stabilization Okay. at this point. Um, I mean, I thought it was a good theory, but it doesn't... I, I have a feeling that um, it might be something that it will be a constant. How, how would we... If, if they did use it, David, next year, would we be having to take from stabilization again? We'd want to set up some sort of sustainable funding source. So one proposal that I've been kicking around is, is that we give we transfer free cash back into that stabilization account, which is equivalent to the free cash that they contribute at the end of the year. So. Okay. So they contribute to the... If, if you had to guess, how much did the school contribute in free cash last year? Uh, it's between three and six thousand dollars. Okay. But if we can make that number larger, we'd be happy to contribute it back to the benefit of the school. So, on an average, do you think it's usually under ten thousand that they contribute back? So, it would be if we are going to be putting that in. But we're looking to maybe fund a stabilization account of a hundred thousand dollars. That um, would be the first. The first one. Right. And if they, for some reason, go in and they use a lot of it, that would be hard press. Okay. But it gives them some uh, incentive to not clean out all the sure. accounts at the end of the fiscal year. Right. Anybody else? Any no. Okay, let's we'll move on. Number 13, demand fees. We're about to... Uh, we currently charge $15 for demand fees for bills out of the collector's office, which are not paid on time. Uh, there are big bills, there are small bills, there's tax bills, there's uh, small excise bills. Uh, the state allows us to charge up to $30, not just $15. Uh, that would bring in about $30,000 of, of new revenue to the town if we were to take that step. This is uh, something that I'm not sure that the collector herself is entirely comfortable with, but it is an option that we can consider. If they're having a hard time paying their bill, that it's late, that you're going to charge them that fee, you're now going to double the fee? Yep. So area towns, where do we compare to with other towns? I'd have to, I'm not going to make it up, so I'd have to look at it. Okay, I just didn't know if you knew. No. Okay. I thought you presented us with something like that. Yeah, I, don't, I yeah, don't remember what I it don't was. remember, but I, I remember that there was, there was a variety. There was some hot right there, and there was others that weren't. 
there, there was a mix. So there was some that were right up there. And now, and my feeling was, um, you know, if you, doesn't matter if you're, um, you know, you bounce a check, you might, because you can't afford it, you're still going to get that, that large fee. If you're late on your credit cards, you're still going to get that, that fee. And I think people are used to sometimes that fee. It doesn't matter if it's $1 or if it's, you know, $1,000. If you're late, you get that fee. And, and do they have a spot on these if for some reason, um, is any, for the elderly? I mean, do, are there some type no, of... I don't, I don't think there's that kind of exemption. The entire bill would be smaller, but the, okay, so penal, that's where the they penalty help. for not uh, paying. Not, not the penalty, but they do help with... Other oh things, yeah, like the bill. The, yeah, so there's another there's an article that's coming up that would help uh, okay. the, the elderly, and and there's exemptions for veterans, for the elderly, for yeah. income levels. Okay. Uh, so, and we enter into payment agreements with people. You know, we want sure. we want people to right. stay current because we're not doing anybody any favors, allowing them to not pay something in rec up interest at 14 to 16 percent so we want to keep people as current as we possibly can okay uh do we want to make a vote on this now um do i have a motion well, um does the select board vote on any of these now they voted on the first seven and that was it yeah so that's their workflow tomorrow uh, for the day after tomorrow. Okay. Um, I, I'm, again, as I said, I guess I would want to see, this is their budget. I want to see what they think what? about it, the select board first. Okay. Is my opinion. When do you expect them to vote? Are we, are the, you think they're going to be doing this on Wednesday? That's what I want them to do. Okay, so. Well, they are wise beyond all measure. They, <laughs> So they then, at the same time, we will be, we can piggyback on all, that and do it. It's all together in one room. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just think if there's going to be fees increased by departments or something, that it's not, it shouldn't come from us. It should, you know what I mean? Come from them, see what they want to do first. Well, Kathy knows because we've been talking about it since November, and so we've been trying to increase departmental fees. Mm -hmm. This is not a departmental fee. This is, this is a fine. So it okay. has to. This has to appear on the warrant, but the select board are going to have been and are going to continue approving departmental fee increases uh, in advance of the end of the fiscal year. Okay, so this fine, I guess you can take a vote on it, but I just want to see what they would say first. Sure. I don't have a problem with voting on Wednesday. I mean, I would, I would go with whatever you'd like to do if you want to wait and, and do it with them, or if we want to do it now. Yeah, you want to wait for the chair? We'll wait and do it Wednesday. All right, number 14, tax on marijuana sales is recreational marijuana. The, the law allows 3%. Uh, We've adopted this already at 2, so I'm going for the extra percentage point. Okay. And I want to, um, in, in, in these types of things, um, this doesn't matter whether you believe in this or you don't believe in this. So if this is just not any, this just means it's coming. If it's coming, we're going to take advantage of it and get yeah. the, the biggest bang we're going to take. It, it is coming. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so it's not like a, you have a... There's no stores or anything yet. In Hadley, no, right? we no. have a moratorium in place until November 30th. So. Right. But it is coming, and I'm getting telephone calls several times a week from prospective Growers, distributors, buyers, potential retailers. I'm sure. <laughs> People are going to be smiling. <laughs> the deals tax will go up, huh? I don't see a downside. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to increase it from the 2 to 3% is what yep. we're looking to do. Yeah. Do we have a motion? To, uh, do, you wanna, do you want to take this one up? There's a slam dunk. Yeah. I can motion. This is, yeah, I this is revenue. Okay, mm -hmm. I go to uh, increase it to one percent. Second, anybody? Second. Okay. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Article fifteen.
19, this is the real estate exemption. Mm -hmm. This is proposed and recommended by the assessors. They have information which has been passed out. I've got additional copies here. But sure. I would adopt clause 17D. Thank you. Do you want the wrong paper? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. In effect, it would uh, provide a $175 real estate exemption for seniors 70 years or older or a widow or a widower who has less than $40,000 in assets, not including <coughs> their house. Uh, this would be a real benefit for the elderly population in town. Mm -hmm. um, and the cost for this program would be born in the overlay uh, account, which we reviewed the last time we were together. So there's money built into that already, and the purpose of this memo is to outline how that works. to accept Article 15, Clause 17D, Real Estate Exemption. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Next two articles are CPA related. The first one is to provide $35,000 to paint the four columns which are outside of town hall, not town hall itself. Why can't we do the whole building? We just don't get it. How come we can't do the whole building? We <laughs> just don't get it either. <laughs> I just don't get it. How many years are they it trying was, for this? <laughs> it, was, it was submitted to Boston and they're in, under the rules it says painting. You cannot do painting unless it's to repair, restore. Because the town hall had been painted previously, at this point now it's being called maintenance. Maintenance doesn't fall under CPA. You can't use CPA money for maintenance. You so when you painted it the first time, it's called? You're restoring it. After that, you came in and restored it. You did whatever. And they you, don't think restored buildings need to be maintained. <laughs> Well, they expect after that for it oh, to be done. It, it's not for maintenance. It's a big thing, and they, they tried to submit it. They submitted the request through Boston, and it was kicked back. It's because it's maintenance. Um, I, up the original paint job. I just, I so would, can it be changed on the local level, like the wording or something to make it happen, David? Have you looked into this? Yes, I've looked into this, and... With all due respect. Sure. No, I, hey, I'm the one on, on the side. I, I have no, a whole well, board that's against me. <laughs> we were trying to do this for several years now. You've been trying to get this done. So I would like to see it go through CPA. Wait, what? Yeah. How, how can it voice. get <laughs> rewarded well, changed, or they something? They changed the uh, definition of what maintenance was. When originally, I mean, you're quite correct. You can't use CPA money for maintenance items. And when the CPA originally came out, mm -hmm. maintenance was very poorly defined and you found lots of examples of people interpreting it in ways that either worked or didn't work and Boston decided to change the definition of maintenance to broaden it mm -hmm. so that it would either not be so narrowly confined by CPA committees on one hand or so flagrantly uh, ignored by CPA committees on the other hand they have a happy medium which this project uh, can be tested in, whether, whether the four pillars counts as a, as a painting that is restorative in nature, but painting the rest of it would not be that. Have those pillars ever been painted yet? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Just to With CPA money. Okay, so how, uh, in your opinion, how do you, can the local board they control make a the pitch? To allow this? They, there's no end run around the CPA committee. They have to recommend it. To well, that's what I'm saying. So the, the pillars, 
when um, the building inspector came in, he said that the pillars, they needed, there, there was all kinds of stuff happening at the base of them and that they needed to be restored because they were having, there was big problems with the pillar itself. Now once you redo the pillar, because you've taken some paint off or you've done something, now you have to paint them. Okay, the so, base of this so building is rotting. <laughs> well, it's there you go. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's okay. I agree with what you're saying, yeah. and I would have loved to see it go through because my theory is, well, we're going to do it one way or another, and it's going to come out of this bucket or this bucket. It's still getting paid How about by new the taxpayers. Windows? How about new windows? New windows aren't maintenance. New windows would be New windows restored. would be okay. We're not saying we definitely need one. So yeah. this is my theory. When you put the new windows in, then and you all that stuff job. cracks or right. so breaks, so then so you I get see, your paint so job. So <laughs> two things are going on here. One is that we have an article for thirty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars for the four pillars outside, mm -hmm. and which requires a well, we want. recommendation or recommendation for or against. But then there's the larger issue of CPA dollars and how do we spend them in the town of Hadley, and I think mm -hmm. I. Th I think that's an important discussion to have. I've been having it for years. But. Well, I know that they they hired the planning, what is the planning board, um, or Pioneer Valley Planning Board, right, for their to do a um, analysis type of thing and right. to see where we can spend the money. Let's see what they do with that report. Let's see what it comes back mm -hmm. and says, and then let's try to follow that report. And if we can't do that, then I think that tells us something about the future of CPA. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. Now I voted for so far everything that the CP, everything that has come towards us, mm -hmm. um, pretty much except the only times I didn't vote, I voted no against spending the CPA money was when it was going outside of Hadley. That would be the only exception that I made. But um, I know that we'll be paint. The other one that will be coming up is the church, and so we can discuss why they will paint part of the church and not paint. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody can ask for seat. Right. Right? Right. The church is, what church are you talking about? North Hadley Church. The one by you. The church by me? The church. church. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm all for it. I'm right here. No, I'm So, the, is there a really recommendation like for the 35? Right the we, have rec we have a motion? Ah, uh, for 35,000. Yeah, I... Motion to uh, accept that. I second. All in. Any discussion? At least we get the all in favor. Aye. Aye. Done. Now I don't know a whole lot about this next article. It's for fifty-five thousand six hundred seventy-five dollars for the restoration of the congregational church in the North Hadley Village. So this church, the church has stated that um, they. The uh, bell up top, they needed to be fixed. Um, the uh, the tower, mm -hmm. okay, and um, they also needed some. When they fix that, they'll need to do a paint, um, and also just the front of the building needed some painting just because of the stuff that's coming up to you know from the road because they're so close to the road. Um, the sides are all vinyl sides, so it's just the front of the church and the very top of the church. Um, the, there, there has been questions out there about using CPA money for a church, but we as the CPA considered this to be not looking to see what type of religion it was, not even considering that or anything to do with condoning it. It's a historic building. So we focused on it just being a historic building in a historic um, zone. There. So we wanted to see that it was uh, fixed. Now what they were putting into it is they were going to, because um, every time someone puts something into CPA, every time someone comes to CPA, they say what they're going to use for their own funds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kathy knows about that. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they didn't have a lot, but they had some. And what they were looking to do is they were going to change, they were going to spend the money and we're going to have them change um, and put a deed restriction on. Um, for historic building, and that's <coughs> where the money was going to be going. Because. That would be an exterior restriction, exterior appearance restriction, right? Much like the North Abbey Hall. <coughs> yeah. So. yeah. I don't okay. know the details of the restriction. I just know that they were putting on a 
to leave it so that it would stay the looking looks the way it looks like yeah because it, it had nothing to do with the inside or what type of religion it was Excuse but me, it's just the building mm -hmm. it's just the building but i know that that's come up because there was some issues with um other i think other towns or any or something like that with people coming in and, and disputing church. the use of cpa money for a church or something Okay. okay. Well, so I, I just wanted to point that out in case that question came up because that was. I'm question. thinking I should abstain from this anyways because it is like a neighbor. Okay. Right. Well, I don't know. I abstained from the North Haven call. Did you? Yes, I had to. So, so there is a, an issue that town council will have to look over. There is a town of Acton. There is a challenge to use in CPA money for, to restore a church. And that went all through. I think to the SJC, um, who ruled that there are problems with that. So town council is reviewing this particular article to make sure that it complies with that requirement of prohibition against funding something for private purposes. Um, to, to the extent that this is a proper article, we'll go in front of the town meeting, do you have a recommendation? Yeah, I would move to recommend Article 17, pending that it gets by legal counsel as being mm -hmm. kosher mm -hmm. use of funds. I second mm -hmm. that. Are you abstaining? Oh, right. That's right. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'll second <laughs> sorry. that. Okay. Abstaining. Sorry. <laughs> Sounded good. <laughs> it did. So, it does. If we don't have any other discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 So I have a question about CPA. So yeah. like if I, my house was deemed historical, would I be able to go and say, oh, right. I need to blah, blah, blah? Yeah. Okay. I thought so because there was a house in Northampton that got totally redone, wasn't even. I believe so. I mean, the CPA other, the other so thing is though, sometimes it is, it, it comes up, it has to do with public use. So I'm not, I would not 100% sure uh -huh. because if it, it's a private house, because not anybody can just go in there where this is, it is a, a historic building, but anybody can go in. It's not like it's, I think it's public. I, I, I'm not too sure about that. I know that it was a big deal with the, with the uh, fields because we weren't able to do fields for just the school unless Park and Rec was part of it because now it could be used for the public. So if it was just for the school, they weren't able to use it. But if it was the public. Well, it's on the railway. I mean, maybe they, they want to put a tourist foyer in the church because we were going to have it in the North Hadley Hall. Then it would be for public use. Really? Yeah, it's on the rail trail. Mm -hmm. So, just saying. All right. <clears throat> Appointment of treasurer and collector right now we have a an elected treasurer, and we have an elected tax collector. Uh, and this is recommended by the Department of Revenue a couple of times that we move this from an, an elected position to an appointed position, or positions to positions. Appointed by the select board. Appointed by the select board. Mm -hmm. So, uh, right now we have excellent people performing those functions. Uh, Linda, Dunla, uh, Linda Sanderson, rather, uh, does a wonderful job managing the town's finances, managing the OPEB accounts, stabilization accounts, the other investments, making sure that the, that the accounting is done properly. Uh, she does an outstanding job. Susan Glowatsky similarly does an outstanding job, and all you have to do is look at her tax collection rates and realize that she's the envy of the valley. Uh, she's conscientious, hardworking, does a great job, and very accurate, very timely with her, her work. It's safe to say that you're probably not going to get better than where we are right now under a, a system where you're electing these chief financial officers to the town. So the time to make the kind of change that we're proposing is now, while we don't have the problems that some of our neighboring towns are experiencing, um, because they don't have qualified people to manage money in those, those sensitive situations. 
sat down with both Linda and Susan. We talked over this. We made a couple of technical changes to the article, uh, but the article proposes, <coughs> they're on board with it, the article proposes that town meeting authorize the select board to petition the Boston for a special act of legislation which would change these two positions from elected to appointed and give them three-year contracts. Um, and then life goes on from there. I, I like the fact of uh, seeing it um, appointed for one reason it would be I like if someone was to leave you know they and it's appointed then they would give a notice and but or maybe a long notice maybe they could the new person could work with them they could work together for a little while get the you know figure out just like if someone's to leave a job they have someone else come in they work together unlike when it's um, elected it's all of a sudden one person today you're in tomorrow you're out and this is a new person and that's that it's a quick change and I would think it takes a little bit a little while to uh, pick up the ball on that so when you go from being elected to appointed do they have to post those positions, positions. because now they're being appointed positions do they have to apply for those positions that hasn't been decided yet my okay. recommendation is, is that you keep what you have uh -huh. uh, because you have excellent people. And so I'm not saying that. I'm just yeah. curious on how it works. Can, can they just walk right into their own position with it being changed? So that's not up for me. That's okay. up to the select board on that one. Okay. Now, if one was to leave and they are elected, then does it take it takes a whole vote, you know, a whole uh, town vote to come to get a new person on board, right? You First, can, you can, uh, the select board would uh, do two things. They would appoint an interim, and that's typically somebody who's overworked already. Mm -hmm. uh, in some towns it's the town administrator, in some other towns it's an assistant of some kind, or they borrow a yeah. treasurer from another town, or a treasure collector from another, another town. Um, they would then have to set up a special election and they would have to give proper notice and that notice is either 45 days or 65 days, I can't remember which. And then it would cost us money for a special election. It would. Mm. It, it would depend when it happened in the year, like if mm. you were close to, to an election. To an election. Once we only yeah. have it once a year, the election. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, so if you're having it sometime, in, if it happens in February, then probably okay but right. if it's happened since summer if it happens June. on town meeting floor you're, you're, you're kind of knackered and if you're appointed and if you're appointed then the select board just can you know get the candidates and appoint them at their next select board meeting yeah. I mean, I'm already voting on, on this now this is the type of thing some of these are good things I think would be well discussed in the form of government down the road. You know, I think this is a good idea. And also, I thought when we discuss down the road the form of government with Suzanne, like all those, um, you know, she was saying what other t towns, heads. well, not just the department heads, but the uh, studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Does, uh, do we have a motion for this article? Yeah, I'll move to recommend Article 18. A second. Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 19, Animal Control Bylaw. You may not feel that you need to give a recommendation on that one. I don't feel um, particularly that I need to give a recommendation. I don't think, does anybody else have a feeling on that? Only because there's quite a bit to it, I don't really don't know. I assume it's fine. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes uh, the uh, finance committee weighs in on things that are very much financial, and other towns they weigh in on every single thing. So, up to you. I'm trying to read through this, is there a 
clear financial impact to the town? It makes the uh, operation of the police department much easier. <coughs> They're in charge of some <coughs> dogs. Maybe pass on this, and then if, it, if anybody wants to discuss it, we still have Wednesday, and it, we can, uh, yeah, if we want to chime in on Wednesday, we can do it then. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Okay. All right, number 20, we're in the home stretch here. Number 20, the Mosquito Control District. So, the town of Deerfield uh, has decided that insect borne diseases and capuas is something that yes. we had to go through every single year. Absolutely. Insect borne diseases is a uh, problem and that uh, we don't know anything about what kinds of mosquitoes we have, what kind of pathogens they, they may carry. Uh, so they have put together a mosquito control district, the first one from Pioneer Valley. And this is on page uh, 28. Thank you. So they put together the very first mosquito control district in the valley. Uh, these things are, there's one in Berkshire uh, County and most of them are out on the eastern side of the state where they have marshes and um, estuaries and, and uh, tidal waters where the mosquitoes are a big problem. Um, they have secured funding through a grant in excess of $170,000 which can operate the district for the first two years without any cost to the towns. They're recommending, this article reads that they recommend uh, that the town of Hadley join for a three-year period minimum. That has been amended over the weekend to a one-year period. Um, I think that uh, I think that this is worth doing and seeing what they can accomplish in, in a year. So if I understand this right, we, if we recommend this, we would go into contract with them, but they have a grant, so we wouldn't be um, up for any money. Correct. And we are only in a contract for one year, so even at the end of their two years, it's not funded anymore. We don't have to continue. We don't have to come up with anything. We're not. That's the way. I, that's the way I read it. Hmm. Because, yeah, it would be a big deal if we, if once the grant ends, how much are we going to be on the hook for? Right. Yeah, and just to get a sense of how these things are funded, um, I've provided some samples of comparable communities from most of the Berkshire communities. Uh, and there, there's an assessment on the cherry sheet that shows up. This would not be driven by assessments on the cherry sheet. It's not set up this way, so there's no... There's no future obligation that we can't control. I'm okay with as long as we don't. If there's no money <coughs> um, we have to take out right now. Anybody else? Good with that. I don't think it needs a recommendation one way or the other. There's just no financial impact. Right. That's true. We can skip that one, too. All right. Sure. I'm sure you're going to skip the nuisance bylaw. This is for dilapidated uh, properties as recommended by the fire department. <coughs> mm -hmm. Planning board is doing two, two, two zoning articles in one. The revolutionary zone amendment and the seniors housing amendment. Typically, the finance committee does not weigh on those. Okay, unless anyone wants to, I say skip it. Mm -hmm. Skip. Yep. There's three petitioned articles. The first one is for um, ranked balloting, also known as instant runoff balloting. And this is being proposed to change the way that town elections are handled, not state or national elections and not uh, special ballot questions for debt exclusions or other kinds of referenda. But this would be for the town positions of select board and board of, board of health and school committee and library trustees and all the other elected positions. Um, 
You saw the presentation. I did, but I don't really understand what, I, I understand where she was going with it, but when someone's voting, we're going to need a new machine for that, right? Because how, how would we count them unless someone's hand counting them? So I see this being as another expense for us. How much is a new machine? Just curiosity. I have that information. Because I thought it was brought up before or something. Yeah. I mean, they're not that expensive. They're a few thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's more for the machine that would have to have. We would need to handle this kind of balloting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think this might be. Well, I don't know, but because this is quite a bit detailed, it's it's you know it's not just is this one yes and is this you know we're just counting the the dots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to count the dots, then you put them aside, and then you count them again. <laughs> you take them off. Yeah. It's, it was very complicated um, yeah so we can get the cost of the machine I think unless it's extremely prohibitive like the cost then I think that if the voters say that they want to they believe this is a fairer system of voting then it's not really a financial issue unless it's like a hundred thousand dollars then, then we can wait uh, no, no, we're talking about six thousand dollars right then I think it's a financial well, not issue maybe twelve if I'm misremembering maybe less than that I don't want to personally say a whole lot about this article because I feel that the town administrator should not be influencing voting one way or the other. So. Mm. Um, I think I'd like to uh, at least wait on this one. Maybe you could see how much the uh, machine would be as okay. it is right now. I'm, I'm, you know, whether or not we vote on it, I'm more leaning against any causing us any more. I guess I'd like to see, maybe the select board will hear what they have to say too on Wednesday. Yeah, I'm happy to keep thinking about yeah. it. Like I said, doesn't thinking about it. It was, like it, you know, if you want to look at it, they, she's made a couple presentations, I believe, on um, mm -hmm. yeah. the school committee. If it's I, I, that's on TV, that was um, I'm not sure the date. What was the date on that school committee? That was. Uh, That was the, the date in March, wasn't it? it was yes. March 26, wasn't it? That sounds right. So that that they that was filmed for March 26. Also, I think the other day they had it here. Didn't she do a presentation yes. on the 4th? April 4th? She, yes, she did, and so all of this will be online. So it was quite interesting, but it was it, it wasn't just who's number two. I mean, they had, she did it with candy bars. Uh, oh, right, I've seen that presentation. Did you see it? From the school committee meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she was here the other night. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Are there any clear additional costs besides the voting machine? Like on an ongoing to run these elections? I don't think so. I know that she had a conversation with Jessica Spankable where I don't know what the outcome of that conversation was. Is it okay with you, Terry? We we wait this. I mean, just hold off until Wednesday and oh, see yeah. what the the Absolutely. select board has to say too. Yeah. Okay. Let's skip this one. All right. The next two articles are petition articles. They're not particularly clear, but the first one is to move the senior center from the proposed new senior center from the current proposed location of the east end of. 46 Mill Street, move that up to the northern property just acquired by the town, the former Hynoski property at the intersection of Stockbridge and River Drive. So, there's no dollar sign associated with that petitioned article. No. So, just to move the two articles together, We'll just talk about the two articles because one's to move it and one's just uh, you know the funding. the funding. My feeling on that, and I was saying this earlier, is um, I see I see a big sign outside the Legion. Mm -hmm. Whether it be right or wrong, um, I think that at this point 
I think that we need to address that issue. I don't want to see the Legion raising money to, for legal expenses. If they're raising money for legal expenses, that's going to waste their money. Then we're going to have to deal with it, and it's going to waste our money. we got to figure out a way to make it work between giving the seniors a senior center and making the veterans happy. I don't think that it, they, went, they did enough to put a sign up you know, and make and start making collections. There's a problem there. I'm not saying that what the problem is or if they're right or wrong, but I think we need to get this problem fixed and make both parties happy. So the extent to which I can talk about this, because there are lawyers now involved, um, is that the select board had a listening session with the American Legion at the end of March. Mm -hmm. I listened uh, in on that. Yeah. It's it didn't worth, seem like it was that they gave a whole lot of, I was surprised to see all this come up after that listening session, that they actually went ahead and started collecting money to pursue it. So one of the things that came out of that, one of, one of which, you know, what, the select board invited the American Legion to have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. And they repeatedly asked, do you have any concerns that we need to hear so that we can address those concerns? The Legion got up and said a number of issues that concerned them, the parking, the access, the condition of their parking lot, a couple of other things as well. Um, the select board said that they were willing to try to put together a memorandum of understanding that both parties can sign off on so that the project can proceed and that the Legion can have the things that they need and everybody wins. So that uh, there was a rough draft of that circulated. Uh, comments were received, and there's been a revision of that draft. That's coming up for discussion this Wednesday night with the select board. So they're going to see if they can't reach out to the American Legion and come up with the solution that you're talking about. So at this point, I, I, I guess we um, my feeling is um, I would. I would put this off as far as recommending any, anything. As far as the moving to this, moving the senior center, my feeling is I, I don't have any information whether that be a good idea, a bad idea. I, I just don't want to, I don't think that would be the smartest. Move. I just want to fix the problem with the Legion. But I would be um, voting on Article 25. I would be voting. Um, to rescind the funding if one was not, if an agreement was not in place, if they could not come to an agreement. Well, let's talk a little bit about what that may look like. Okay. Um, Just because I don't want to see a big lawsuit happen. Oops, there goes the building inspector. I'm sorry? The building inspector. Oh, no, he's back. Well, yeah, no, no, he's gone again. He just walked. He's just gone again. <laughs> I just don't want <laughs> I'm not sure if he wants to come in. Yeah, he, he must have appointments today. Oh. I think we shall chip in and get David an up to date phone. No, he wants his phone. No, they're doing away with it. I'm going to have to He's go over to here one of pushing the buttons. Yeah. And I'm like, on the new phones, you don't, when you push the button, you don't hear that. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I'm surprised it's you didn't hear it ring. To get rid of phone or something? I'm not going to Yeah. Or maybe that's just that model. Probably. Well, talking a little bit about this art. Tim, this is David Nixon calling at 7.25 on the uh, night of April 9th, and uh, we're with the Finance Committee, and if you want to present your budget, now would be an excellent time to do it, because they are happy to see you. If you can't make this time, feel free to give me a call, and we'll work something out, 413-320-6695. Yeah. All right, so... Is that another, like, like, on camera? 
Listen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's public information. Public okay. information. <laughs> um, so, um, the language of this petition article is to rescind the funding for the senior center, um, except for the money that we've already spent. All right. So, we have spent quite a bit of money at this point. $290,000, if I remember correctly, or, or is it 390000 something on that, that order. But we've also accepted the first rough round of uh, funding on the grant for the library building. We received a check for $732,000 for that project. So this article would have to do the work of returning that money back to the the state because the library cannot move forward. If the senior center is not going to move forward, then the library is not going to move and forward. And why couldn't you, why couldn't you take, instead of um, putting this, if we rescind, stopped it, okay, because you, you weren't able to come up with an agreement. During the summer, you came up with an agreement What's to stop it from fall town meaning restarting the whole project with whatever the new agreement is? Well, you'd have to, we'd have to get all that funding back in place again. You know, you'd have to cancel all of your contracts and then bid everything out. I mean, to be starting over at square one, pretty much. I mean, uh, so that, so however this article moves forward. Uh, it's got to be done in such a way as to minimize the kind of financial turmoil that uh, that uh, article contemplates. Okay. Well, then it's a really important thing that this the select board get this fixed before yeah. uh, my before meeting. Opinion on the article? I don't know. If it really matters because. But anyways, the only thing I have a problem with, well, other than you know, veterans are seniors as well, so they have a vested interest in both. Many of them, but um, the, so the only thing that would I would like to see is I think that when we voted on the money for the senior center, you know, because it was a domino effect, we all had to vote, you know, make a decision where the seniors were going to go because, you know, the library needed their building space. So I kind of just think like we've been back and back and back and forth with new things consistently happening. That when the original vote was taken to um, do this. I don't think everything was laid out what we know now, you know, versus not knowing anything then and now. A lot of people don't, as things are going on, they don't, so many changes that they, you know, the whole concept has changed or a lot of it since the beginning. I don't think that's supported by the facts. I mean, I'm sorry to disagree with you, but mm. if you go through the chronology of events and what was presented when, for, this has been a project that has been baking since the 1980s and that it's gone through many iterations and considerations and it's been identified as a priority for a very long time. So I'm not saying it's not a priority. Yeah, but I, I think okay. that I think that I, th I don't think you do the town a service by saying that nobody knows what's going on with this project. I think I didn't been a say lot that of, either. I think that there's been a lot of communication on this. Okay, so I didn't say that either. All I'm saying is that when they started this whole process did, and voted on, in my opinion, you know, where the building was going to be, parking lot was going to be, or how many windows was going to be, was not involved in any of that when they voted the first time for the money. I'm not saying it's not, it's not uh, a good thing to happen. I'm yeah. just saying let's just make everybody knowledgeable of what's happening. I would double check your facts. I really would. Okay. Well, I would have to say that um, I didn't like the way it was presented in the beginning, only with the first time it was voted upon, when we didn't have a number, a, a, a strong number. When we first got the money looked at, the very first time it was a $3,000 number um, in front of the Finance Committee, and then it went, um, then it went to more of an $8,000 number, and then at the town, they voted like a $5,000 number. They cut it in between. And then um, some town people said, oh, why don't we just do the full amount, do it right the first time, which is probably they were correct at that point. 
Um, and then we had to do it again. I'm just saying the numbers have been floating around and they didn't have a strong number from the very beginning. And that was the bad taste in my mouth from the very beginning that we didn't have, uh, unlike the library who had, knew the exact number at the time. Um, so that was my, my problem with, with that. But uh, I do think we need a senior, it's not the fact that we don't need a senior center. I think that they do need a new space. But why can't we, if if this if we need it, if it's not cleared up with with the veterans if it's not cleared up with the veterans and all of a sudden we have a lawsuit why can't we stop this and I understand what you're saying it's going to cause a domino effect well the library why does that have to stop why can't we so even if the seniors building did come down the library still goes in there we have to still figure out what we're going to do with the senior center yes yeah, it's going to say where do they go where do they go and absolutely but we have to figure that out and we have to figure it out ASAP doesn't mean you have to stop the library it just means you have to make a make a plan and get everyone on board and figure out something but you need to figure out something that makes everybody happy and there's two other departments that we did have this go through and Hadley meeting and Park and Rec didn't really have a place to go either yeah, so we, you know what I mean so yeah, it's we have, we have space for them we're yeah, we hoping forgot. we do, right? Don't forget about the planning. Well, Don't I forget about the planning board or historical. No, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. So there's right. like four departments. Right. You know? I mean, it's a concern, and it was done on a rush, you know, on some of it. The River Drive Stockbridge Road site would be perfect for Park and Rock. <laughs> Just saying. Well, that's not up for me. So say. maybe you could have a little campus there. Yeah. <laughs> if, if we, and then the if, veterans would be if happy. We, if we were to put the fire substation up there, we don't want to put up the senior center or the park and rec facility. Those, True. Are, really, those are really incompatible uses. So Maybe we just use yeah, the North Valley Hall me. section. Hmm. For not up there. to me. No, I know. But yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. There's other departments here that we're talking about other than just library no. and senior center. Right. There's four other departments in that oh, section. Oh, yeah, yeah, we haven't forgotten that. You're right. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. And, and, and the only thing I have a concern about is a lawsuit. I think that's a big deal. And I think that does affect the Finance Committee a lot. And I think that's a huge deal to have a lawsuit on hand like that. Um, I think it's, we got to take it very seriously. And we want to be good neighbors to veterans. What's the timetable on the $750,000 grant that we have from the State of the Library? So we got five payments on. Uh, what is it? Three point nine million dollars. Okay, so seven thirty-five is the first installment. We'll get uh, an installment one every once every year. And so, if this project is delayed, how much could it be delayed before we have to give back the money that we are getting from the state, and then do the whole application process again? We would. Uh, I think that at most you'd have a year. Maybe a little bit more, 18 months. Could we put an amendment on, on um, at the town meeting regarding the um, the rescinding and put a some type of an amendment on a delay or something like that? Yes. So on the floor, town meeting floor, you can make a floor motion to amend the articles just as long as that the moderator determines that the amendment is within the original scope of the article. So that would give some more time for an agreement to come out? Yeah. So that's a possibility. If, that's, if, if the select board agrees to an agreement. Well, it's a petition article. So. Right. So anybody could put an amendment to delay. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather see delay than rescind. I don't like how the two are worded. I don't I necessarily think moving is a good idea, but I don't think rescinding is a good idea. I think they need to figure it out is a good idea. <laughs> so I would like to, say, you know, maybe we can make a, you know, an amendment. Okay. okay. And All what's right. the nature of the 290 or the 390K that we've sunk into the senior center project so already? So the, all the survey work, the OPM work, the architectural design work, uh, the uh, uh, all the legal work that went into it. So that's sort of like how long could we delay before that stuff's no longer good and we have to pay for it again? Uh, say that it, I mean the, the problem with delay is that you've got escalator costs down the road mm -hmm. you know and those can be pretty substantial um, 
but a certain amount of months you could delay it. We have delayed it already by a certain amount of months just trying to get the funding secured. But most of what we already put into it should still be good by the time we stop delaying. So long as you're on the same site, yeah. Right. Well, if you change sites, then a lot of bets are off. Yep. <coughs> Okay, so at this point, we're not going to vote on anything here. Okay. All right, so next couple of days, we'll be seeing each other again. Here's the agenda in case you need it. It's been sent out electronically, but if you need it, here it is. Um, state revenue has been running higher than expected, for about $9.5 million above benchmark this time. Year. Uh, so I'm hoping that we'll get some additional monies out of the uh, House Ways and Means budget. Uh, there's some room for optimism there. Okay. And I'll have a better update of the finances of that on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Um, right before we uh, adjourn, we just want to check the agenda just outside the door. Oh, hey, Tim? Yeah. Are you there? <laughs> Missed it by that much. <laughs> talking to David about this to try to do with all the inspectors and get uh, get them under the same get the dues mileage and everything under the same line item oh. so if there's a discrepancy that comes up with uh, mileage especially for the gas and plumbing inspector we have that ability to take it out of that full line item that everybody than would be using, okay? And it would, and as you know, if you go over on one line item, maybe you can pull from another one. Um, plumbing and gas, he just has the two line items, uh, dues and mileage. And he, and Dennis, really relies on the mileage because he uses his personal vehicle for that. And, he, uh, and he's on a salary. So uh, unless, when he started uh, the, lot, the first year, he, he didn't realize how many miles he was putting on his vehicle. And he went over the, the mileage. 
So we've upped it slightly based on the year previous on what he was driving. And we had, I think we, we had a little bit more, but I think if we threw that in under the same number, that might, we be, can manage that a little bit better for him. Okay, so that was the, that's the one big suggestion I was hope, hopeful that we can do. David, can we, is there a reason why we have to have them separated? Can we just have, build it, just put inspections and then have everything under just one? Uh, you can up to a point. Uh, okay, so it depends on who you want to throw in there. The health inspector is under the Board of Health. Electrical inspector we have under the revolving fund, but we can we can uh, combine these three line items without uh, difficulty. Okay. And I've talked to the Board of Health about that. I mean, they, they have no problem with it. Certainly the only thing that they're concerned about right now is that they, they point them. And that wasn't going to be taken away from it. It was just the budget trying to get the uh, work. Yeah, but the Board of Health stuff is not in here, no. is it? No. Right? And it, it, like the, as far as the mileage and meals and all that, that's... Yeah, that's all we wanted to do so this we, time around. Okay. Okay. Uh, as you can see, the, the numbers haven't increased. Uh, we understand that the budget is extremely tight mm -hmm. right now. Uh, and the, we have a number of part-time inspectors mm -hmm. under building, and and uh, some of them, some of them get used, some of them don't. Uh, we have a couple uh, just on call in case one of us at night, if there's an emergency, and you'll see that there's like three inspectors, um, building inspectors. Uh, I'm sorry alternate inspectors that are on there. Mm -hmm. But, um, and again, uh, uh, last year, we didn't have that many calls at nighttime where where I wasn't around and we didn't have to call on them. Do you think if we if we called on them more, can we increase our revenues? Be, or, I mean, are we behind? Because of, because not enough, st not enough hours in a day? Well, I, a couple of years ago, I did ask for another five hours, but I didn't get those hours. I'm still at 35. Um, we brought in considerable amount of money last year, and it went up um, from the previous year. It's a crapshoot on how much we get based on the permits and what's mm -hmm. going to happen. Um, the, the other type of revenues comes from fines and things like that. Now, I've always taken a position not to just go out and find people. If, if there's a sign that somebody put up without a permit, I go ask them, I say, hey, these are, the, these are the regs. You're supposed to have a permit. Will you take it down? If you want one, come on in and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Mm -hmm. And at the, for a number of years, I was handing out a lot of fines. And it just soured a lot of people. And I don't, I can't, quite honestly, I don't think that's the way to try to handle all this stuff. Um, most people don't know all the regulations, ins and outs. So we don't, I don't go out to find people. If they're continuous, continuously um, not following the regulations, then we hit them with fines. Mm -hmm. But I don't really find that that's, one of the areas that we can enhance fines, we did increase all the line, um, all the fees last year. The only thing I did not increase last year was residential. I felt that we could increase, enhance the budget by the commercial end of it, mm -hmm. which we did. And you can see it went up considerably last year. We brought in. Two hundred seventy some odd thousand dollars last year with all the line items, be it um, weights and measures and and all the other uh, inspections. Uh, we, Mike, the fire department, myself, we are required now to do annual inspections together, and we half up those fees, and we have thought about 
possibly doing a tiered system with that, and we most likely will do that. The annual inspections on what, well, I mean, is it on all businesses? They're, they're not all businesses. Where uh, there is a, our, under, the, under the building code, there is a table that stipulates those. Those are the uh, hotels and motels, restaurants, assembly places, that's what you're looking at because you want to make sure that, that they're abiding by the regs. But I, we both discuss and we'll probably do a tiered system with the larger uh, buildings. We'll probably tier it up. Right now we're charging $100 mm -hmm. per inspection and we do it once a year. Mike does some up to six times a year depending on what the, um, what the use is. Mm -hmm. But um, that would bring in some amount of money. Again, I really, the one line item that I haven't increased was residential. I really like to try to stay away from that. It's, it's not the highest in the valley, but it's certainly not the lowest. And I think we bring in enough money uh, in inspections on the commercial end. And, you know, the amount, uh, if we, we're at $50 for a flat fee on a lot of the uh, residential inspections, like a re-roof, re -siding. So every time someone takes out a, a building permit, do you go and, and re-inspect it? Ever, do you go back after? I will sit here and say, I can't. I, there's, not, there's not enough of me to go around. Mm -hmm. I, the way I handle it is, the great thing about Hadley is we have some very, very good contractors. They call in, they send me pictures, but do I physically go out there? Can I? I can't. There's just way too much going on. So I have to really sometimes pick and choose. Okay. I've been pretty successful with that. Some of the guys will wait, but I don't want to hold up a lot of these projects. I do have, by right, 30, 72 hours to do an inspection. And quite honestly, after the 72 hours, they're legally not supposed to go uh, forward unless I tell them they can. And, but we do our utmost to keep the projects going because that's the, the only way to have enhancement around here. I was just thinking if we have someone that's an on-call person, if you can't do some, and we're having, and, and depending on the dollar amount we're paying, and, and if they could go do, like, uh, like a few of them, maybe it's just a way to make money. I just didn't know where you stood yeah. if it was. Here's the problem with, with that is, one, Massachusetts uh, has a huge shortage of inspectors. And if you start looking around, especially on the east side of the state, mm -hmm. they're jumping from one town to the other to increase their revenue, increase their salaries. The salaries in the average um, in the east side of the state's $90,000 plus. Uh, we're starting to see that, and even some of the small towns, uh, Montague lost their inspector. They had to, uh, they went out several times to advertise and they've upped it quite a bit uh, to just try to get somebody that's qualified. The issue is that um, there, there's two levels, building commissioner and uh, uh, just a regular building inspector, local inspector. You have to have a building commissioner to run the office. To, you have to have that. You, the local inspector is a helper, okay? An alternate inspector is somebody that comes in when I'm not available. He cannot be a local inspector. So it's put a big burden on some of these towns to make sure they have qualified people. So that's why they're jumping all over the place because they're, they're making some big salaries now. So, I mean, can we bring somebody in it's hard to find somebody, and they won't just come in at, you know, five hours a week or anything to do this stuff. I'm fortunate enough that we have two 
building commissioners that live in town that are willing to be alternates for me. And that's uh, Tom Quinlan, who works down in a couple towns south of us, and David Wischkewitz, who is uh, yeah, nice. building commissioner in Pelham and in Amherst. Okay, I, I'm lucky enough to have Paul Tacey, who had just retired from the Hill Towns, but I can't always get him. I have him for when I go on vacation. That's the primary focus. He doesn't want to do annual inspections. So I am talking to someone else. I, I won't say he's a top-notch person to do annual inspections, but I am reaching out to him. But, but the, the annual problem. inspections, you say Mike does that as well. Well, he, but he does the fire side. He does the fire side. That had become extremely complicated okay. with the sprinklers and also the hoods for the uh, for the restaurants. Mm -hmm. So it, again, it's required by regulation that we go together and do the inspections. Okay. Okay. So we do do those. We do all the annual inspections that are required by code. Can we do more legally? Yes, we can because the code says that we can inspect every single business establishment if we wish to. And, we, and some towns do have up to six inspectors and one or two of them are there specifically just to do businesses. We're not there and it, we go to the ones that we feel that need to be looked at and um, for, the, for violations. I mean, I just went over to a small store today mm -hmm. when I saw something that was out of, and went into the back room and it's just a disaster. So you give them 24 hours to clean it up. Those are the things that we generally find in, in inspections and things. So can we, you know, but it's, it's one of those things we can sit down later on and talk about. Um, You know, how much more build-out are we going to have? Um, we didn't think there was going to be much this past year, but I think with, and we saw that with um, Amazon buying Whole Foods and all of a sudden all the other uh, grocery stores jumped on the bandwagon and did some substantial changes. Mm. And we got a few things coming in, but the big problem that's hurting us, we need restaurants. Restaurants where you're going to make your money on a lot of fronts. We're not going to get any more if we can't get the uh, natural gas in here. And right now, we've been told it's, it's yeah. we're never going to get it. Right up later, so yeah. they're even. I hope that's true. Well, I really I do. Wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet the farm. I wouldn't bet it either. So, um, you know, we got we got some good development coming this spring, but uh, years pass. I. I had a good handle on what would be coming in the next three years. It's uh, the whole thing's changed nowadays. It's it's not as easy to find, figure out what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. But how many? If you had to guess, how many uh, building permits do you, like in a month do you get? Well, it's sporadic because of the uh, of the months. But the average we've been holding on, I would think um, about. 650 to 700 um, electricals in the mid 300s. A year or a month? A year. A year. Yeah, so it gets to be. But remember, you could, we can have a house uh, which it average like seven inspections, seven required inspections that we have to, uh, have to do, mm -hmm. not counting electrical and plumbing and, and, and mm -hmm. gas. The hotel down there I'll probably do in the neighborhood of 60 inspections. I usually I'm get there at least three times a week, depending on what's happening over there. Because so you could do a literally 100 inspections on a big building. That's why we charge what we do right. on those big buildings. Right. Because it's a. It's well, a I know that we have some big stuff going on, and I see how busy you are, and I just wonder. You know, are we not getting a lot of income because of you just don't have enough time to do that? If we, I could tell you if we,
did bring in somebody part time, uh, and that that means they they want hours in because that's how they're going to make money. That can we pay for him plus? Of course we could, uh, but I I don't think that there's a a uh, taste for that right now. Okay. So we we predicted that the Tim's department would bring in ninety three thousand dollars for the twelve months of this current fiscal year. Mm -hmm. uh, he's at one hundred and fifty seven thousand dollars right now. So every dollar he makes just builds free cash for next year. It's all mm -hmm. gravy at this point. Yeah. Well, I see your area is a way to make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, a, he's one of those uh, well, spots that you know just gets money coming in. <laughs> he doesn't have a lot going on. And you'll out. see that in every <laughs> single town. Right. That every single town does rely on the building department to bring in substantial amounts of money. Mm -hmm. And and they bring in millions of dollars in the eastern part of the states quite all the time. Yeah, it's it's not uncommon. But if you guys ever offer it, say, hey, Tim, is it time to get somebody else to help out? I would jump on that in a heartbeat because I can't do everything. Well, I was just surprised when you mentioned the three inspectors. I was like, I didn't know about that. I mean, well, and I did see the other part-time, but I didn't really know. I can't get them to work during the daytime because okay. they, they already have their own jobs. All right. So how hard is that to build into the budget? Just finance community to take the lead on it or select board. I mean, essentially, if the revenue that would come in would immediately offset and then some, whoever we hired for maybe a half time, right? Mm -hmm. Then how hard would that be to work into the budget? So the select board would have to agree to add a part-time position, so okay. we would budget that for the FY19. One of the so, ways we, oops, sorry. So that part-time position would have to be dedicated towards doing the inspections that Tim talked about uh, that sometimes he can't cover, uh, as well as uh, code compliance issues, uh, because code compliance is something that takes a lot of time, so you obviously want somebody to build a, a structure which is safe and compliant to the code. It's all about public safety, but getting somebody to do that, we've had the problem down at Pride. I, not speaking out of school, we've had them in for a public hearing. How many hours have you wasted because they can't make, they can't uh, adhere to the minimum requirements of the building code? It's a lot. Yeah, probably a part time. But I, doubled, <coughs> but I doubled their fee because they started digging before. Um, one of the things that we really need to enhance the um, technical end of everything. Uh, there are things that we do that we, it's just very, very time consuming. So, uh, you know, every permit we have to copy the, all the different departments. I mean, I don't do that, Dee Dee does that, but it's a huge amount of paper that's wasted and, you know, I mean, when you're doing like, I don't know how many she does, like 12 <coughs> copies of each. And distributes them all over, all over the time. And you're talking, you know, 1,500 uh, permits. I mean, it gets to be a lot of time. And we don't have the ability. I spend too much time trying to track information up front prior to issuing permits from other boards. We don't have it online so we can see if it's done. So there's so much of this paper that just keeps on getting generated. I think that's going to really help and enhance it and be able to get out more. Uh, and having the right person in the office is paramount. I'm, I'm hopeful that someday when we start looking at all this stuff that we, we can seriously look at how my department is run on, on that front. It's not just being a secretary, but if we can have somebody that's knowledgeable, and that's a great thing about Dee Dee because she's with her 
significant other right now is a building commissioner. So she's actually in his office all the time during the night time. And she comes and she brings that experience to this office. But she'll, if we have somebody in the office that has that background, they'll be able to do a lot of that stuff that I'm doing. It gives me more time to go on.